Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received yesterday at Sakhir Palace retired General Anthony Zini and U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Arabian Gulf Affairs Timothy Lender King, who are currently on a regional tour. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa was also present. During the meeting, His Majesty the King reviewed with the guests the solid historic relations between the two friendly countries and means of developing them on all levels. His Majesty the King also commended the developing bilateral cooperation in the various fields. His Majesty hailed the effective efforts and the vital role of the U.S. administration in enhancing peace, security and stability in the region. His Majesty, meanwhile, affirmed Bahrain's support to regional and international efforts to boost joint cooperation mechanisms between the United States and countries of the region. For their part, the U.S. envoys praised the role of His Majesty the King in consolidating the distinguished relations between Bahrain and the United States and strengthening joint cooperation to serve the best interests of both countries and peoples. During the meeting, they exchanged views on a number of issues of mutual concern, as well as the regional and international developments. His Majesty the King held a dinner banquet in honor of the guests. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qadaybiya Palace a high-level delegation of Nobel Peace Prize laureates. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that peace is the only way to deal with the rapid international developments that target the security of the region, noting that development can only be reached by strengthening cooperation and consolidation. He expressed pride in the delegation's visit, which reflects the international recognition of Bahrain's efforts in supporting humanity peace and stability throughout the world, adding that the visit comes in line with the Kingdom's goals that promote peace and support international efforts in this regard. The delegation hailed the achievements of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, in overcoming the economic and security challenges that targeted Bahrain, despite of its limited resources. The delegation also commended the government's achievement in development, investing in human resources, and providing children's rights. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister valued the efforts of the delegation in reminding the international community of its responsibility in supporting peace efforts in the world, noting that these efforts to consolidate peace and stability prove that peace can be achieved in our modern world. He affirmed Bahrain's pride in receiving the international political figures who contribute to achieving security in their countries and societies with the aim of reaching peace in the whole world. He also asserted that the kingdom is a country of coexistence and harmony that will continue to work with its international partners to reach a stable world. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister valued the positive feedback of the delegation regarding the efforts of the Kingdom towards development in various fields. Nobel Peace Prize winner 2014 Kailash Satyarthi presented His Royal Highness the Prime Minister with a certificate of appreciation in which he commended His Royal Highness's efforts in achieving political, social and economic development in the Kingdom and promoting the values of peace and coexistence among the Bahraini society. Kailash Satyarthi affirmed that His Royal Highness's approach for development included all community members, especially children, youth and women, which embodies His Royal Highness's wisdom as a leader possessing high values and virtues. He added that the public expenditure of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, in the fields of education, health and social protection reflects the features of His Royal Highness's leadership approach. He asserted that the development the Kingdom witnesses represents a protection for future generations and proves to the world that the leadership in Bahrain has laid the proper foundations for development. He congratulated His Royal Highness for his commendable efforts in children education, women empowerment and equality between all the people in Bahrain. For his part, the former President of South Africa, Frederick William de Klerk, hailed the Kingdom's development in various health, educational and housing fields as a result of the government's efforts led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. He affirmed that Bahrain achieves a quantum leap in building model cities and health and educational establishments. For his part, the former president of Poland, Lech Walesa, expressed pleasure in visiting Bahrain, asserting that all they saw and heard from His Royal Highness and all the community members in Bahrain manifest the high values and principles that the world should adopt. The delegation members expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for the warm welcome, hailing His Royal Highness's vision, which embodies his belief in the need for international community cooperation to achieve peace and eradicate all causes of disputes. They declared that in of their visit to the Kingdom, they viewed the advanced level of development and modernity in Bahrain, embodied by the urban development projects in various areas.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, affirmed that the visit of the Nobel Peace Prize laureates to the Kingdom of Bahrain is a historic and unforgettable visit for not only three presidents, but three heads of peace, who have made great achievements for the first time on the land of peace. In a speech at a dinner held last night at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, in honor of Nobel Peace Prize laureates and heads of state, the delegation included former President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Frederick William de Klerk, former President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Lech Walesa, former President of East Timor, Mr. José Ramos Orta, Under Secretary General and former Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat, Ms. Anna Tabiuku, and Nobel Peace Prize winner 2014, Mr. Kailash Satyarthi.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister delivered the following speech. Thank you for your historical visit to our country. We are very happy to have you here, and we thank you for what you have said to the media, to the what you, who you met today and yesterday, and you have tomorrow also. This is a visit we will always remember with thanks and uh, appreciation. It's never happened before in our country that we have three presidents at the same time visiting us. We had the honor of visit President de Klerk in 95, and we see him now in a good health with his lady, Mrs. de Klerk, and I hope that we see you again, and we thank you again for your presence. We honor us with this visit, and I can assure you we will continue cooperating and working together for the best of our people all over the world. Thank you again, and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Your Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, distinguished presidents, excellencies present, <coughs> honorable ministers, excellencies, my fellow guests, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like today I look like a Bahrain <laughs> because I do have some background with this great country. When I first arrived here in uh, October of 2000 on a UN mission, and His Royal Highness was hosting the regional meeting of Asia and Pacific countries, preparing for what we call Istanbul plus five in the UN system. That was five years the General Assembly was evaluating the state of housing and human settlements in the world. And um, Bahrain had taken the initiative and responsibility to convene the regional meeting for Asia and the Pacific. And uh, after that, I found a lot of support as an Under Secretary General of the United Nations. This country, the, His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, and the government generally uh, was later to be identified as one of the world's best practice in matters of housing and human settlements. Your Royal Highness, <coughs> uh, members of the government, Your Excellencies, former presidents, Nobel laureates, I would like to convey the good wishes of <coughs> Katerina Zagladina, the President of the Permanent Secretariat, <coughs> Nobel Peace Laureates. We have been very impressed by everything that we've seen in Bahrain. Your country is uh, an example in terms of sustainable development goals, <coughs> In terms of multiculturalism and we would very much like to examine the possibility of closer cooperation between the Permanent Secretariat and the government of Bahrain with a view to holding meetings in Bahrain with a view to inviting the Bahraini government to apply to the Permanent Secretariat to host one of the Permanent Secretariat's Nobel Peace Summits. We feel that you are a center in the Middle East. You have much to teach people from around the world. <coughs> we look forward to closer cooperation with the government of Bahrain. What we have seen here is a country that has invested in its future by investing in education for its people. We have seen your leadership investing in the health of the people today so that they can be healthy tomorrow. 
I was privileged to see at the Juma Masjid the ayat of the Quran. From a man and a woman I made the peoples amongst you, that you would come to know one another. The best amongst you is the one with the most taqwa, which we can't translate into English. And God is all aware and knowing. So we saw from that the multiple cultures that are here, Hindus, Christians, Jews, coming to know one another and living together. It is an honor to be in a country in which the leadership is investing in the health, the education, and creating a diverse economy where wealth can be spread and grow. For their part, the members expressed their sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his warm welcome and loaded the attention he paid to all that contributes to the consolidation of peace, coexistence and rapprochement between countries and peoples. They expressed their admiration for the cultural and urban progress of the Kingdom of Bahrain. They praised Bahrain's ownership of the development and the government's efforts in the most important elements. The dinner was attended by senior officials and ministers of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held today his weekly majlis at Rifa Palace. Members of the Royal Family, senior government officials, members of the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, members of municipal councils, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the majlis. His Royal Highness welcomed the broad range of visitors at the weekly majlis, which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment commitment to rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty the King's aspirations to maintain a strong bond amongst Bahraini society. The Majlis visitors extended their appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness for hosting the Majlis and emphasized the important role His Royal Highness plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity and opportunity for the people of Bahrain.
On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, and leader of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa participated in the World Equestrian Games, which kicked off today. His Highness led the Royal Endurance Team in the championship for a distance of 160 kilometers after the team conducted a brief training before the veterinary examination of the participating horses, which was conducted in the venue of the World Championship. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the team aspires to make a new sports achievement for the kingdom in this championship, held in North Carolina, U.S., with the participation of 40 countries from around the world. His Highness added that these international sports competitions face many challenges, but the plan prepared for the team and its members will lead the team to their desired goal. Before the race, His Highness wished the team success in the championship. النتائج بكرة اليوم إعداد عدينا كل شيء جهزنا الخطة شاورنا من أصغر فارس إلى ما وصلنا مستوى جلالة الملك وشاورنا بالخطة وباركها تو والله يوفق إن شاء الله دائما جلالة الملك طول العمر خير وبركة لكن التبديل اللي حصل بالنسبة للفرسان هذه رؤيتكم الأخيرة هذا شيء طبيعي بدلت لأني أرتئي شيء آخر تمشي إن شاء الله بالخطة اللي أبيها بكرة سمو الشيخ ناصر راح يكون كالعاده في المقدمه ومع الفرسان لتحقيق نتيجه طيبه ان شاء الله. ما اعرف بكره مجريات سباكي اللي تحكم ان شاء الله. سؤال بالنسبه للامطار والتخوف من الاعاصير وغيره ذي، شو الوضع اللي بيكون؟ احنا وياه ان شاء الله، هو مو على الفريق الملكي البحريني بس وعلى الجميع بنتعامل ان شاء الله ويا الوضع، الحر، الجبال، القوانين الصارمه اللي حطوها، احنا قدها ان شاء الله. وباذن الله اذا مشت الامور تمام ما بنرجع ان شاء الله الا بميداليات. كلمه سمو الشيخ ناصر الاخيره. بنرجع لكم ميدالية بإذن الله. The high-level delegation of former heads of state and Nobel Peace Prize laureates, accompanied by Minister of Cabinet Affairs Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Mutawa and Sheikh Hossam bin Isa Al Khalifa, visited the Bahrain National Theater, where they were welcomed by the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamaim Mohammed Al Khalifa. Also present were ministers, senior officials, ambassadors, media men, and academics. During the visit, a lecture was held during which former President of the Republic of South Africa, Frederick William de Klerk, former President of the Republic of Poland, Lech Walesa, and Kailash Satyarthi, Nobel Peace Prize laureates 2014, gave speeches. The participants spoke about the coexistence in the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising the Kingdom's efforts to consecrate and safeguard human rights and ensure advanced levels of services and care for citizens and expatriates. At the beginning of the lecture, Frederick de Klerk congratulated the Kingdom of Bahrain for its success in achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030, which was appreciated by the international community during the submission of Bahrain's first voluntary report to the high-level political forum on sustainable development of the United Nations Economic and Social Council in July. 
he reviewed the history of the conflict in his country and the achievement of peace, pointing out aspects of the challenges facing South Africa at the moment. Lech Valenza addressed the challenges facing the global economic system and the challenges facing the world at the political and economic levels. Kailash Satyarthi spoke about the reality of children's rights, praising the respect and concern of the Kingdom of Bahrain for the protection of the rights and dignity of human beings and children. At the conclusion of the lecture, the audience expressed their admiration for the rich experiences reviewed by lecturers, especially with the regard to ending conflicts and achieving peace. Minister of Cabinet Affairs Mohammed bin Ibrahim al Mutawa held a luncheon at the Bahrain National Theatre in honor of the delegation. I would love to spend more time. I would love to stay here. I feel like home here. The people are so nice, so, so warm, so passionate, so lovable. I'm very impressed, especially meeting with the Prime Minister. He is a great guy. He is a visionary. He is a true uh, leader uh, with a lot of moral authority and a lot of compassion and respect for humanity. Um, and also ordinary people. I met people from India, from Pakistan, from other places. And uh, they feel so safe and uh, respected and welcomed in Bahrain. That is very important. A discussion session was held at the Westminster Hall on human rights and British technical assistance to the Kingdom of Bahrain with the participation of a number of members of the House of Commons and in the presence of the Minister of State for the Middle East and the Foreign and Commonwealth Officer Alistair Burt. Two years ago, when visiting the country, I was shown a large amount of arms, ammunition and other ammunition found by the Bahrain Security Services. These were from Iran, which is definitely stoking up as much trouble on the streets there as possible. And that trouble is often deadly. Bahrain is now a major target for Iranian subversion. And this threat is ongoing and very real. We should not forget that. Yet in a region where human rights are often hugely ignored, I feel that Bahrain is trying its best to be as good as anywhere. But from my contacts with many different sectors of Bahrain society, I do actually feel that the government does its best to represent everyone who lives there, no matter what their religion or origin. May I highlight that women in Bahrain can vote, dress, worship, and drive what and when they like in the country. I've met quite a few Bahraini female MPs. Everyone, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Jew, whatever, has freedom to worship the way they wish. My interest in Bahrain, how did it come? Well, the reason my interest came to my attention in Bahrain was that Reverend Chris Butt, the vicar in St Matthew's Church in my constituency, just before I had been elected to Parliament, had gone on to be the vicar at the cathedral in Bahrain. So when you have a constituent who has gone to another country and what you have said all along, that you will campaign for religious freedom, then it's important to take an interest in the work that they do around the world. I had never been to Bahrain before. I did not know much about Bahrain before. But when the vicar in my constituency went to Bahrain, then that's when my interest came. And the Honourable Member for Strangford knows my commitment and campaign on religious freedom, which we have done together on reforming the blasphemy laws in Pakistan. And, Madam Chairman, you know, those who push for those reform in those countries sometimes put their own neck on the line. But when it's right to push for change and to stand up for religious freedom and human rights, it is the right thing to do. That's how my interest came, uh, my interest came uh, to the forefront on Bahrain. In 2014, the Ministry of Interior's Ombudsman Service won the EU's, European Union's, uh, the Shailert Prize for the Promotion of Human Rights in the Gulf <coughs> Cooperation Council. The final point I want to make is this, is with regards to the other area, we all talk about human trafficking. And that country has recently got a tier one criteria you know, with regards to human tracking and improving how individuals are treated who go and work in that country and their experiences. And they're now on par, rated by the State Department with the United States, uh, it's now rated them with Germany, United Kingdom and other developed countries to say that what they are doing on uh, the human trafficking. So I want to end by saying 
reform is taking place. Change is taking place. I will mention three brief points, and I'd firstly like to set some context, firstly in regard to the domestic situation in Bahrain. What you see in Bahrain when you travel there is a country, a young country, that has achieved a remarkable development in a very short space of time. Many points have been mentioned by other members, but the steps towards democracy that the Kingdom has taken, uh, the remarkable level of religious freedom for all religions and freedom of worship, uh, as well as moves towards a family law that provides greater autonomy and freedom for women in, in the family. These are remarkable steps for a young country in that region. The regional context is one of Iranian interference in the domestic affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain. And it is a tragedy that since 2011 particularly, those seeking to engage in politics have been militarised Political groups have been militarised by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard called From Iran, and sectarian divides that weren't there before have been created and exploited. And that, that, is a, that is a modern day tragedy which the Kingdom is seeking to overcome. But of course, Mr. Donner, this didn't start in 2011, this started in 1979 when the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran, and from that point, from that date, the, uh, Iran has sought to export Islamic revolution throughout the region. And we must ensure that an understanding of the regional context and the threat that uh, Bahrain faces on, a daily, uh, faces on a daily basis, we must ensure that that guides our thinking. Because this threat is real, and like the Honourable Member for Beckham, I have seen Iranian supplied munitions, explosives and IED materials that have been brought in by IRGC operatives by boat into the, the kingdom and fortunately um, seized by uh, members of the security forces. In line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to follow the needs of citizens and residents, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussain Ali Mirza, visited the Electricity and Water Services Centre at Country Mall. The Minister was accompanied by the Chief Executive of EWA, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and a number of officials in the authority. The Minister viewed the preparations of the centre, which were made according to the criteria specified in the guide to evaluate service centres in the Kingdom, following the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and First Deputy Prime Minister, in order to develop services in the Kingdom. He also viewed the new e-platform that was established to manage queues in customer service centres. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, delegated the Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed Al Saleh, to attend the inaugurating ceremony of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Bahrain Information Center at Prince of Sakhla University in Thailand in the presence of University President Dr. Nuwat Kubra Dob and senior officials in Sakhla and Patani, as well as the Bahraini Ambassador to Thailand, Ahmed Al Hajri. On this occasion, the Minister expressed honour for attending the inauguration on behalf of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, affirming His Royal Highness's keenness on supporting various sciences inside and outside the Kingdom, which stems from his belief in the role of knowledge in enlightening people and developing countries. The Minister then delivered the following speech. Official representation of the Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain to celebrate this special and important event of the inauguration of the Bahrain Information Center at Songkla University. To start with, I am pleased to convey to you all the sincere greetings and best wishes of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, who is, in the, main, in, is the man behind the achievement we witness today. The wise leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa had shed a plenty of real successful projects, which he either initiated or took the initiative to support in the field of health, education, information. 
The Thai party expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for the initiative of donating to establish the center and for his cooperation in various fields, especially the health domain, affirming that the two countries' keenness on strengthening relations in the future and on increasing cooperation. The minister expressed thanks to the Thai party, highlighting the solid bilateral relations and noting the importance of increasing cooperation fields between the two countries in the health field. In line with the work of the Supreme Council for Women's Delegation in France, the Secretary General of the Council, Haral Ansari, held a meeting with the Secretary General of the High Council on Equality between Men and Women in France, Clary Joyride, and Commissioner for International Relations, Clea Lucardor, in the presence of the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sheikha Dr. Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador of Bahrain to Belgium, Dr. Bahia Al Jishi as well as a number of officials in the Council's General Secretariat. During the meeting, Al Ansari affirmed the Council's keenness, led by Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Tabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on adopting the best policies and world standards in the field of enhancing equal opportunity and equality between the genders. She noted that the advanced Bahraini experience in the field provides it with an international dimension and qualifies it to enter mutual and equal partnerships with advanced international institutions. Al Ansari briefed the attendees on the institutional development of Bahraini women. For her part, the Secretary General of the High Council on Equality between Men and Women briefed the attendees on the Council.